But one thing I can promise you this, I will always tell you the truth. The database started as a project for the first 100 days. It was in part an effort to not let us get distracted by the easily checked false or misleading things the president said. And we could keep our focus on writing substantive fact checks about big issues. And we could just say, oh, well, that thing the president said, we just put that in the database. We don't have to do a fact check on it. And then when we were done, readers begged us to keep it going. We kept it going for a year. And at that point, he did 2,000. It seemed manageable. So we said, we'll keep it going for the whole four years. And then it kind of ate up our lives because he kept saying more and more false things. The president's line got worse and worse the longer he was president. So in his first year as president, he made on average about six false or misleading claims a day. The second year, it was 16 claims. The third year, it was 22 claims. And then in the last year, the fourth year, which of course was a pretty dramatic year, his average 39 claims a day. Now, 39 claims a day is it's a lot. It's kind of amazing. And we recorded one day in November, the day before the election, he made more than 500 false or misleading claims. Uh, they said, uh, how is he going to do in Pennsylvania? He's going to win Pennsylvania, except for the cheating. We figure we have to leave 5% for the cheating. I mean, I think one reason why it just exploded so much at the end there is that he never really discarded a false claim. There were a few instances, but very few. So his, you know, his, you know, he did lots and lots of campaign rallies towards the, uh, before the election, and the rallies got longer and longer because he had more and more false things to say, and he just kept building on it. There would be a, you could see the pattern. We'd have to go through his grievances about the Mueller investigation, then his grievances about the Ukraine impeachment. Then his grievances about the coronavirus and falsely claiming everything was fine. The bottomless Pinocchio emerged out of the conundrum we faced because we, we generally do not like to use the word lie. I mean, lie means that you're getting in someone's head and you're saying that they uh, actually believe what they know what they're saying is false. The problem with Trump is uh, he lives in his own alternative reality. And so he convinces himself that his falsehoods are the truth. In order to qualify for a bottomless Pinocchio, it needs to be repeated at least 20 times. You have to see these trade deals. Yeah, we were losing a fortune. Hundreds, hundreds of hundreds billions of, billions of, billions of dollars. dollars. We lost 500, 500 billion, billion dollars. 300, 400, 500 billion, billion dollars, dollars a, year. a year. Billion! The biggest tax cut, biggest reform of all time. It's the biggest reduction in taxes in the history of this country. It's the, the biggest, biggest tax, tax cut, cut in American, American history. history. This is the largest, the largest tax, tax cut tax in the, the history, history of our country. country. If you look at the bottomless Pinocchio list, it gives you a pretty good guide to the types of falsehoods that the president would say. A good portion, about 25%, are Trump falsely claiming accomplishments that he did not make or exaggerating about his accomplishment. Nearly 500 times he said he created the best economy in U.S. history. We also built the greatest economy in the history of the world. You know, we have the greatest economy ever in the history, history of, the, of world. the world. We have the greatest economy in the, the greatest greatest economy economy in the history of the world. No country had anywhere near us. We had the best economy anywhere in the world. The rally on the mall, January 6th, I counted 107 false or misleading claims. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. One question people often ask, was President Trump a successful liar? I've always said that the proof would be whether or not he won re-election, because if he won re-election, that would indicate that, that someone who constantly misled the American people would actually successfully hoodwink enough that he could continue as president. So he didn't win re-election, but he has managed to convince a sizable portion that this utterly absurd statement that he lost the election because of fraud is true. And uh, it's gonna take a lot of uh, work to make sure that people understand that it wasn't true. The long-term lessons of Trump, if that kind of misbelief continues to persist, it says that it might indicate that you know, a more skilled uh, um, 
wannabe despot could actually succeed where Trump failed. What happened here?